this really, really interesting uh, acoustic trio I have on the road that year. All right, and you know, speaking of 2008, um, you produce most of your own work and have produced a lot of other work for other artists. Mm -hmm. um, in 2008, you had somebody else produce for you, oh, Joe Henry. Yeah, Joe Henry, yeah. How was that? That was fun. Take a step back. Oh, it was fun. It was like, oh, God, why would I? It was a, so different. It was, it was so relaxing. I said, I'm never going to do this again. You know, from <laughs> now on, it's like, God, why would I want to do the extra work of producing my own records? I actually play and sing a lot better when somebody else is telling me what to do. All right. Yeah. So you enjoyed the experience. So. I loved it. I loved Joe. And, and you know, the great thing about Joe Henry is that it's the, the conversation, the ongoing conversation is so entertaining that it's not work. It's, it's a, a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah, he's an encyclopedia, that boy. That's great. Um, uh, speaking of which, too, with a production, you did a duet with um, Johnny Cash that he originally mm -hmm. didn't like. Is that is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell us well, a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he didn't like it. He didn't understand what was going on. I had uh, wanted to recreate the first time I was riding down, like pre dawn, the pre dawn hours. I was going fishing with my father and my grandfather, and the first time I heard "I Walk the Line" on the radio. And being a writer for years, I wanted to recreate that scene, but I couldn't figure out how to have a chorus because it was all just really bubblegummy. I had really great story with the with the verses, but. Um, and then it dawned on me that, that his original work words fit perfectly into the melody I had for a chorus, so I just put them in there and voila. And I was, uh, he was my father-in-law for a lot of years, but uh, at that time he we were, we actually became better friends. From me, from <laughs> recording that? As an ex, I was, we were better friends. Um, so I called him and I said, so he came to the studio and I started telling him what to do. And then it <laughs> dawned on him that he thought he was going to come down and sing the song the way he had been singing it for 50 years. And uh, that's not what I was asking him to do. So he, it was a funny moment. His, his eyes narrowed and, and, you know, he's an imposing guy, that man in black, or he was. And he said, son, you got a lot of damn nerve changing my melody. I said, you're right, I do. Now get out there and sing it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is after he wasn't your father-in-law. Yeah, it was. Was the pressure a little bit off? The pressure was <laughs> off, but he went out there, you know, after, he went out there and sang it a couple of times and then looked through, you know, through the glass in the studio and kind of gave me that look like, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, so you grew that, up. That was fun. Grew up in a musical family, married into one, and uh, is your your family's pretty musical? I take it a lot of music at your house. My daughter's a songwriter, and uh, yeah, music's just a big part of it. It's just like it just grows on the trees. I'd love it for it's it. It's in the water. <laughs> Great. Well, let's uh, let's play another track if you don't mind. All right, I'll, let's see. I'll play a new new song that I may not be able to remember the words to. Siren. You came to mind. You were the pretty part of us, but I'm what's left behind. The quotient's remainder, the last standing sign. God, I'm missing you. Your mouth still so soft, your countenance fair. Time stretches to shape you right out of thin air. But I can't hold your image if I blink, you're not there. God, I'm missing you. Are you gone forever? Are you gone for good? Am I going crazy? Just wishing. Coming around the next corner, 
Step off of that train Your old black umbrella Your face half in the rain God, I'm missing you You're every curled rosebud that's cornered my eye. Each turned up coat collar that just passed me by. That old sanded down moon in a tar paper sky. God, I'm missing you. Are you gone forever? Are you gone for good? Am I going crazy? Wishing you Come around the next corner Step off of that train Your old black umbrella Face half in the rain God, I'm missing you God, I'm missing you Beautiful. Rodney Corral here on the Trail 1033 for the local lunch Grammy winner, Rodney Corral. And uh, reading here, you had five consecutive number one hits between 1988 and 89. Mm -hmm. Five. That's huge. Yeah. R what were you thinking that time? <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't think and do that. <laughs> or so, I can't. How was the Grammy for you? Were you sh surprised? I mean, that's like the, the big prize in yeah, music. Yeah, that was... That was my memory, and I performed, my memory of the Grammys was not so much uh, the Grammy, it was performing on the Grammys, and uh, Miles Davis sitting in front of me on the front row, and I'm up there singing this song after all this time, and there's Miles Davis, you know, kind of turned sideways with his back to me, <laughs> and I'm on national television, and the only thing that I can think of, there's Miles Davis, I've got to win him over, I've got to win him over, if I can't win Miles Davis over. I don't deserve to be on this stage. And I didn't win him over. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to meet him and talk to him? Oh, no, I didn't get to meet Miles Davis. But, you know, the re everybody else in the audience, there was, you know, there was a lot of friendly faces looking at me, but I just couldn't win Miles Davis. You know, and he's the man that, you know, I just admired him so much. It's like, if I can win over Miles Davis, then I'll know that I was good. Even more so than, you know, a Getting the Grammy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you were the Grammy, about Miles. Winning the Grammy would, would, would not have meant as much to me as it would have been if Miles Davis would have turned and looked at me and went, good, good job. <laughs> oh. Trust me. So the memoirs yeah. uh, are coming out in January, and you can pre-order them. Uh, tell the folks where you can pre-order this. RodneyCrowd.com. Okay. Get yourself free three downloads of a live record. All right. And playing tonight at 8 o'clock at the winery. And again, tickets are expected to sell out. They're $12, and 8 o'clock is the uh, show time for that. For more information, call 830-3296. And, uh, yeah, you're going to be on tour all of next year, it sounds like. With I will be. Many cities, and uh, we wish you the best of luck here Thank at the Trail 133. Thank you. And I appreciate you coming in today. You bet. My pleasure. All right, so we got one more song, and this is from the Outsider album. And it's off the album. It's Say You Love Me. Want to wanna give us a little story about this song? Oh, well, let's see. I, when I wrote this song, um, I was I was re remembering those, like, uh, Muddy Water, the Standells. And I was going through a period of, like, those those great, sick, like, uh, when the Rolling Stones were doing, uh, this could be the last time. So I wanted to write one of those songs that are reminiscent of the Standells, Muddy Waters, and the last time, kind of a cross between the Rolling Stones and the Stan and Standells. Okay, well here it is, Say You Love Me, Rodney Crowell on the Trail 103.3.